Hi fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. Today I'm here with the For the Love of Classics tag. So it's been forever since I've done a tag video, which is a shame because they're really fun to film and I know you guys really like watching them. But thank you to everyone who's been still tagging me in tag videos even though I haven't been filming any for a very long time. I can't wait to do all of them. I love classics, and so I just want to thank Katie from Books and Things for tagging me to do this tag a long time ago, and also Ange and Yamini for making this tag originally. I'll link all of their videos down below so you can check them out. I'm sure you've seen them already. This is an old tag, as I said, but let's get into it. So, question one, why do you read classics and how often do you read classics? So, classics to me are books that have stood the test of time, that there's something intrinsically special about them, whether it be their thematic content or their caliber of writing that has made them endure in our minds. So, they have usually made a great impact on society and pop culture. And they're the kinds of books that even if you haven't read them, you generally have some sort of knowledge about them because they really permeate our society. So I read them because I feel like they're often the meatiest books for me, that they have the, the books that deal with the difficult issues and they really have a lot to unpack and think about. And they also have a historical context usually to them and I personally love historical fiction, so I sort of see classics as usually as an extension of historical fiction. Let's see, how often do I read them? Because I did not answer that part. I think I read one at least every few months. Um, yeah, that seems about right. Two, what is a period, country, or culture that you haven't read many classics from and would like to? So I basically only read English and Russian classics from the 19th century, so yeah, I could really do with some broadening of my classics reading. I feel like I'd want to read some more modern classics, which I am completely unfamiliar with, as well as some more French literature, which is something else I don't even know where to start with. Um, everyone says they think I'd like Madame Bovary, so perhaps that's a good place to start. I would definitely be up for some modern classics or French classics suggestions in the comments down below. That would that would really be appreciated. Question three. What modern book do you think will be a classic in a hundred years time? I think Beloved by Toni Morrison, but I feel like some people already consider it a classic, even though it was only written in 1987. Uh, the Handmaid's Tale is another one like that. I think it was written in 1985. And of course, with the popularity of the TV series, I think it is definitely uh, permeating our culture and will be a classic if it isn't already considered one. But yeah, the 80s was a while ago, I guess, now? Uh, so how long does it actually take for a work to be old enough to be considered a classic? I actually don't know. If, if you know the answer to that um, or have an opinion on that, also let me know because, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years? Is 50 good? I think 50 maybe. I arbitrarily came up with that. Question number four. What was the last classic you read? The last classic I read was North and South as well as Barchester Towers, which I finished both of those last month. And North and South is definitely a new favorite of mine. What was the first classic you ever read? Probably Charlotte's Web is my guess, though that's just the first one I remember reading. I think it was in third grade. Yeah. What is your favorite classic book cover? <sighs> there are so many beautiful classic book covers out there. I love the look of those Russian vintage classics, though I don't own any. I think there's also a really pretty edition of Wives and Daughters, which I also don't own. Um, so I will have to just insert pictures of those. But the prettiest one that I do own is probably this edition of Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I love the classics that have just sort of iconic book covers. Classics that if you, even if you couldn't read the text, you would know this is that classic. Great Gatsby, that one has a very 
iconic book cover, the the blue with the face with the tear. Um, you know what I'm talking about. I'll insert a picture of it. But books like that, that just, it's not just the classic that has permeated society, but it's that book cover. It's on t-shirts. It's, it's a famous book cover and it's iconic and I love those. Question seven, classic authors you wish had written more books. Um, I guess Jane Austen. She has written quite a number of books, but I love them so much. I wish there were more and I only have one left to read and that's Mansfield Park and I've been putting it off forever because after that I won't have any new Austen books to explore and that just really saddens me. Question eight. What is the least favorite classic that you've read? And for me this is a toss-up between Moby Dick and Walden. Moby Dick has some delightful passages to dissect about identity and, you know, between the whiteness of the whale and the famous first line of call me Ishmael, but, you know, okay, call me Ishmael, well then what does that really make him? If he's not Ishmael, what is he? And of course the otherness of Queequeg, but it was just not a fun experience reading that book for me, and the chapters with all of the whale facts were so dense. I disliked the experience of reading the book. And I feel like Walden is actually quite outdated, but has been repurposed as sort of a hipster or a counterculture manifesto. Anyway, it just didn't resonate with me the way that I think it resonates with some other people in the present day. So that one's another one that I, I really just did not enjoy the reading experience of. And I actually studied both of those in the same class. So I wonder if it was the class more than the books sometimes. I don't really know. Question number nine, what is your favorite translated classic? And for me, that would be Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, but specifically the translated version by Richard Pevear and Larissa Volokonsky, because that is the version that I read, and that's the version that I like so much. And I know translations do make a very big difference in your reading experience of translated works. Question 10, what is your favorite modern classic published after 1900? I guess at the moment it would be Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, but there are many others that are definitely contenders here. Rebecca is just a book that I had a really great reading experience with not long ago, and I keep revisiting its beautiful writing and haunting qualities in my mind. Question 11, classic literary places that you would like to visit. So that would definitely be Howith with the Brontes, Bath, um, which I've actually been to Bath, but I went on a day tour and I saw like the Roman baths, but I didn't get to see any Austin things there, which is such a shame. So basically London, I, I want to go on a London UK literary history tour one day. That is a goal of mine someday in the far future. Orchard House would be cool too. I'd love to take a tour there, and it's a shame I didn't. I was so close when I lived in Boston, but uh, none of my dental school friends would, who had a car would take me, so shame. Same with the Emily Dickinson Museum in Amherst, Mass. That was another one that would have been easy for me when I lived in Boston, but oh well. Question number 12. What is the first classic you would recommend for a child? And I can think of quite a bunch of really good children's classics. Um, Heidi, Little House on the Prairie, I love those books. Caddy Woodlawn, that's a good one. The Secret Garden, maybe that one, that one's the best. A Little Princess, ooh, uh, C.S. Lewis's The Chronicles of Narnia books. Actually, you know what? Picture books are probably really the first classics we read. Um, something like The Cat in the Hat or Good Night Moon, those are classics, I remember those. Actually, that question where it said, what's the first classic you ever read? Changing my mind, it was probably like a children's book classic, because I think those count something like Pat the Bunny or Good Night Moon, definitely. Question 13, classics that you think are mistitled and what would you title them? For this one, instead of giving you one that I came up with, I'm going to link you to the best website ever. It is so funny. It has all of these misnamed classic book titles and it says what their book titles should have been instead. It is hilarious. You should definitely go check it out and yeah. 
I spent like an hour and a half or longer on that website while making this video, just saying. Question 14, your favorite classic that you'd like to recommend to everyone? So for this one, I have to go with Jane Eyre. There are probably better classics out there, but this book just has such a special place in my heart, and I think that you really can't go wrong with recommending it to anyone and everyone. Plus, it's a good buildings roman, and I think everyone loves a good buildings roman. And question 15, who do you tag? Well, this tag, as I said, is kind of old, and I feel like it's already really made the rounds around booktube, so if you like classics, if you think this video sounds like one you'd like to make, consider yourself tagged. I would love to hear what you guys think about classics in general. So that's all for today, and I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye! Mm -hmm.